Welcome to Salon Talks. I am Mary Elizabeth Williams, and we've got with us today, I'm so excited, this is Terry O'Quinn. You know him from Hawaii Five. Oh, Castle Rock. You had a really exciting little arc on Castle Rock. Great exit. Uh, yes, you had one of the best exits I've seen in a while. <laughs> um, the horror classic, The Stepfather, and also The Stepfather too. let's not forget that. Uh, and of course... We could forget that. <laughs> And of course, his Emmy and Screen Actors Guild award-winning role on Lost. He is also now the co-star on Amazon's Patriot. I'm going to describe you as a dad juggling family and work. You're, you're kind of working for your life, work balance, uh, and living your best Gwyneth Paltrow-like life. Uh, the new season is uh, just launching. It's incredible. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. I am such a fan of this show. I'm I, glad. I love this show so much. A friend of mine asked me, have you seen this thing? And I hadn't, and I started watching it, and I just instantly became obsessed. You, as you said earlier, it's not a show you binge. You go on the cruise with it. Yeah, yeah. I just hesitate to apply that, uh, to that particular word to it <clears throat> because that seems kind of obsessive, you know. But um, this show just kind of hooks you gently. And... Uh, Rather than drag you in, you just kind of swim along behind it and just keep on watching is kind of how I feel. <laughs> just keep it in your sights. Okay, but here's the thing. I, when I try and talk to people about it, I, I am at a loss for words. And for at least the first season, a lot of the early reviews were the same. It was, uh, we don't really know how to describe this show. It's kind of a spy show. It's kind of a family show. So I want to know, when you tell people, I'm on this show called Patriot, what do you tell them? I, you've summed up my problem. And talking about the show, I'm sort of at a loss for words as well. I, I, I tell them, I just start telling them the story, which is what I play, and then I have two sons and well, who they are. But I, I don't have, there's no, I have no snap phrase for it. I, you know, it's, it's very dark, um, but that's kind of masked by the fact that it's very funny. It's very funny. So for context, for anyone who hasn't watched the first season, you are an operative. Your government, would you say that's a, the right word? No, I would say I'm a director of intelligence. You're a director for, of intelligence. Some unnamed U.S. Uh, agency or department. And you have two adult sons yes. who um, struggle with their own uh, career <laughs> challenges. Yes. And, and their personal demons. Yeah. Yes. As, as, they are, um, as they are trying to carry out some United States government business. Would yes. that be a good way to describe it? That's a good way to start. Okay, that's a good way to start, but it's about yeah. so much more. Yeah, well, the two adult sons, well, one is the, carries the show, more or less, uh, Michael Dorman, who plays uh, my son John, John Tavner, uh, alias uh, John Lakeman. Uh, and I'm the director, as I said, of intelligence of this department. He is one of my operatives. He's an agent, a secret agent. And uh, my other son is kind of a bumbly, lovable uh, congressman from Texas. My family's from Texas. So um, he's, uh, so I, I send my operative son, John, on a mission. And this, it's a simple mission uh, to deliver something from A to B. That's all I want him to do. Uh, but I call on him because he's the best agent I have. And uh, I, so I want him to do this task. And everything goes wrong. And uh, it's, uh, it's just a colossal screw up. And um, it's delivering, some, I don't know how much I can that should actually well, say. Well, this is the first season, yeah. so you can talk about the first season. Yeah, I feel like to, if people haven't seen it, we can... Yeah, you still have to watch it. Yeah. No, he has to deliver this money to try and influence an election in Iran, but the money goes and he gives it to the wrong person because he was instructed, he got bad instructions from the agency. And, uh, and the rest of season one and season two right. is Just the pursuit of this lost money and, um, and the tribulations that befall him because of the ineptitude of this agency that sent him on this job and uh, people keep showing up that are getting in the way and uh, and bad things keep happening to him but he's but I'm committed to the task because that's my job I'm 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 doing those things for the government or trying to get things done that aren't supposed to be done they tell me don't do this we don't want you to do this and I understand that to mean do this but don't tell us about it so I get my son to go and do it because he's also a very committed person. He's almost unstoppable and it's, it's, it's freaky. He can't leap tall buildings like a super spy, but he'll, he, can, he can fall from tall buildings and get up. And uh, he continues to do that. And I know that about him. So, you know, when I go and do this un illegal thing, uh, I bring it back and say, look what I got. And they say, oh, okay, well, well you shouldn't have done that. Wink, wink. <laughs> and then, so I, 
then I proceed on, I understand I should go, we can keep going forward. But um, everything happens to this poor kid. And uh, any reasonable parent would of course say, come home and get well, but I, I say we have, to, we have to carry out the mission. Right, this is the family business. And this season is a continuation of that. And in this season, you are working much more closely together because of things that have unraveled in season two. And you get to have a different kind of relationship together. And I have to say, it's a lot of it's very sad, but you also, the two of you look like you are just enjoying each other so much. Well, I credit Steve Conrad, who wrote, created the show, directed everything, directed it, every episode in season two, and wrote all the music that is sung in the original music. Steve wrote all that. And, um, but I credit him for creating this familial work atmosphere the, between not just the cast not just the family in the cast but the entire cast because everybody who's in season one all these weird and wonderful characters that Steve Conrad has, has produced they all come to Paris they all show up in season two from the little tiny cop to to the dog to everybody and uh, and it's it's a really uh, it's it all becomes one big family of, and I don't mean just like, oh, we all love each other to death while we're at work. I mean, the sort of the story sort of includes everyone in such a way that it seems like a, a big kind of extended family. Now, let's talk about the music. You mentioned the music. So you, Terry, you have the voice of an angel. Oh, well, that's very the kind. The voice of an angel. I watched a clip of you from 30 years ago singing a song on MTV about the stepfather. The stepfather blues. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, little slugger. <laughs> there is there is a clip of you singing about going stabby, stabby, stabby. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> on your face. I woke up this morning. I just had to kill my wife. Though this is not appropriate. It, those were different times, <laughs> and it was only a song. And, and as Ricky Gervais would say, it was a joke. <laughs> it was a, you haven't act, no actual wives have been killed in <laughs> no, the, no, in the, in the of singing this of these songs. But, but and yeah. you get to sing on this show a little bit and play guitar a little. But the yeah. music in it is, it's, I've, I don't know if I've ever seen a show that uses music the way that this does. In terms of original music, but also in, in found music, in, in soundtrack. And it propels the story in a really funny and also traumatic way. I mean, you talk about your, your son in it saying, like, he's, this is how he's working things out. Yeah, well it, well, it is. I've never seen anything like it either. He, he, he basically just, you know, he's singing us, he just starts, and he's, and he's a terrific musician, Michael Dorman, and his voice is wonderful. Uh, I could honestly, I believe he could have a recording career, and he, he, who knows, he might, but, uh, but these songs by Steve are basically, you know, I was sent to Iran to, you know, take an Ahmadinejad and nuclear weapon, but, but, but it's all this sort of lilting music, weird, and it makes you laugh because the lyrics are telling you the story. I, I have to tell you, there's one shot in season two, and I've talked about this. Uh, it's a Steadicam shot, and the Steadicam, for those who don't know, is a camera that, that the cameraman wears. It probably weighs 50 to 70 pounds or something. And he's walking backwards as the camera points at a character. And the reason is the camera can be steady as he walks. So he's walking backwards, and, and there's one shot that starts out. He starts out singing a song that Steve, that Steve wrote. And, and he's singing about what he's going through and what his thoughts are. And the whole time he walks, it starts on a subway train, comes out on the platform, up three sets of stairs, onto the street. It goes to a, a little shop where a crime takes place with, that involves four other characters. They, he and his three friends leave the shop, walk back down to the subway, down the stairs, and get back on a train. Wow. And that's a six-minute scene, mm -hmm. basically. While he's singing, it's all just him singing the song while it happens. And two things. It's an amazing sort of piece of music and, <laughs> and song, but it's an unbelievable steady cam shot. I mean, people don't do that. I had to, I had to go back and rewatch it, and the part where there's a crime committed, I had to go back and say, did that just ha did I just see what I think I just saw? <laughs> it's and they never cut. Yeah, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's a stream of consciousness, yeah. but it's musical. So was the music, you as a, mu as a musical guy, was that a draw for you for this oh, show? Yeah, it was, I mean, but you know, it snuck up on me, like so many th uh, elements of this show. It, at first it just seemed weird, and then it was funny, but, and then there are a couple songs, I mean, there, and then there are a couple elements of songs that I, they still get me. I mean, there's one that he, he, his brother, Edward, who's the, the bumbling senator, who I say, come on, you have to come out and help, help John. And at some point he figures out, because the family doesn't know what I'm asking John to do. So Edward figures it out, and John tells him, 
And then he sings this um, beautiful song. <laughs> it gets me. And uh, how does it go? But it goes, and, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if it, it calls back the song that he and I sang together. If I needed you, would you come to me? Lay your head on my chest and let me re help me rest like Charlie. Now that you really know me. Yeah, it's beautiful stuff. It's, it's gorgeous, and it's a beautiful piece of music. Yeah, it's... it's. I'm exhausted. I'm on jet lag, so that's how come I just got misty-eyed. Okay. Is I, I was in Hawaii, and I'm like, totally, yeah. Is totally. that it? It's not, it's not because you're emotional? Well, I am. A little bit? Okay, because I... Another element of this second season that is really innovative is you are... Aside from the fact that you are you are an, uh, an intrinsic element of the plot, you also really serve as this season's Greek chorus and as its narrator. It, the, sp the whole structure of it is really so much you looking straight at a camera, talking about things, and the performance you have to give relaying these events that have just recently happened. Mm -hmm. Did you, what was it like when you read that script? Like the work that is required of you. Yeah, my first thought was like, wow, that's, I gotta memorize a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. But um, What supplements do you take for memory? Yeah. Well, do you know what it is? In, um, to go back to the being misty-eyed all the time, I think you start, I think you get to a certain age, older people become more emotional than younger people, and that also it's a muscle that you've learned to so well that at some point, oftentimes when I'm working, I have to go, I just can't be that. I have to not be, not let myself be emotional because it's too easy. I mean, I'm at home and I'm watching a Doritos commercial with a dog in it, and it's just so touching. <laughs> Some dog. of those Doritos commercials. I know, I can't help it. And so I have to watch out because I, I, that kind of stuff just sneaks up on me. But um, to speak to your question, I think that's just another aspect of Steve's brilliance, the writer, because when I'm talking to the camera, I'm telling, I'm explaining things, but I'm not explaining, I'm not warning you of anything that's coming. I'm explaining sort of what happened or what is happening, but it's simply another aspect. It's another look in the window of this many windowed house of what's going on. Well, know? this is a show that's really about storytelling and yeah. the different ways that we tell stories, whether it is through, through song or through a statement uh, or the lies we tell each other. But it's just, it's so much about that. And it, it really comes together in all of these unique different paths. Yeah. And you have this really special cast, including someone you worked with 30 years ago, Deborah Winger. Deborah you, Winger. You played her boss. 30, played her boss. 30 years ago. 30 years ago in and Black now, Widow. And now she plays your ex-wife. Yeah. And there are moments, Terry, where you are looking at her acting and it's just the pleasure on your face watching her is really something else. <laughs> well, that's genuine. It was, and I hadn't seen her since. I hadn't seen her in those 30 years. It's, it's amazing how you cross paths with people and how, and, and you're, you work intimately and then you never see them again the rest of your life or even speak. But that was delightful to have her, uh, to have her show up. Steve told me she was coming and I said, that's gonna, that'll be wonderful. And I think she's terrific. I hope, I hope, uh, I know Steve wanted to do three I think you want to do three epi seasons of this, so hopefully um, Amazon will be motivated to do one more season, and that Deborah gets to carry a little more of the weight. Yeah, because it's she's, uh, she's terrific, and she just brings a whole other different energy to the family dynamic. Absolutely, for and sure. He, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that's what that was another jellyfish where he calls. You know, the, have I have we explained the jellyfish reference? We have yet? not. I know it because yeah. <laughs> you know, I know what saw, it is. Yeah, yeah. But maybe you want to tell because a little. Because he called at some point. He's he's so traumatized. Um, my son is so traumatized that he doesn't, and it's unlike him because he's one of those kids who just never stops. He's just a guy who never stops his commitment, and. Uh, He's so traumatized that he reaches out to his mom at one point, just calls her, you know, hi, mom. And, and she says, how are you doing? He's pretty good. And he always says pretty good, and he's never doing good. And uh, so she comes. He says to come. She, he says come, or she's, she comes to Paris and joins us. And uh, I'm like, that's another freaking jellyfish that keeps showing up. You keep creating. Try to kill one jellyfish, and you get two jellyfish. And, and now they're everywhere. Every corner you turn, it's uh, some other complication. And it, putting it together, it, I think that what you said was right. It's like, um, it's like, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And I think when Steve was cutting it together, it was like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. But for me, jigsaw puzzles are terribly frustrating. And uh, but watching this one, 
come together as you watch the show is very pleasant. I don't think, I don't think you're, I know Lost used to drive people mad trying to anticipate what was happening or what something meant. In this one, it's just like, oh, like, oh, wow, that's cool. And it's just one more thing falling into place. And uh, I think that's beautiful about it. That's why I guess that's what I mean about that whole binge thing. It's more of a uh, long, say, what time is it? It's dark outside. <laughs> There's a confidence <laughs> in it. There's a confidence in the storytelling. Yeah. And I think that that is a lot of what people respond to. That's a good word for it. Is that you You know you are in steady hands, and you know that you're going on a journey where you will you will not be led down blind alleys, that these things, that these little these little elements are all going to pay off at some point down the road, and nothing will be, there will be no strings left. No, I think that's true. I mean, because if nothing else, someone will just show up on the screen and tell you. <laughs> they will actually tell you what is yeah, going but, on. But, there, but that's a good word for it. There, it. And it makes you be, and I think it makes you be more patient, uh, that confidence, because it takes its time. Um, when you, it, you know, if it wants to see two people talking together, and if that moment is worth stopping and looking at, watching for, then you stop and watch it. And then uh, you don't get, uh, it's not that hard, sort of rush, rush, rush kind of thing. I sort of equate it to, you go to a restaurant, you want good food, it's going to take a minute to cook. I mean, it'll take, a, you know, it's not fast food, but it's good food. It's, you get the tasting menu. You get the whole, <laughs> yeah. it's just, you're going to be there for a little while, yeah. right? right yeah. So you talked about maybe there being a third season. Um, I, I, like I said, loved the show, but I found it months later. And it's one of those things where it feels like it came along almost at the peak of peak TV because it was greenlit in 2005. I believe it was when it started. Now start, you know more than I do. I, well, I've done my homework. Yeah, yeah. So it comes together three years ago. It premiered almost two years ago. And it's one of those shows that has built up this cult-like following, but has has also had all of these little gaps between um, between seasons. And I'm wondering, you're, you're, a, you're a working actor. You're an in-demand actor at this moment when there is so much out there. There are so many different platforms, mm -hmm. so many different things in production. Is that an asset or a liability or a little bit of both? Because there's so many great things in production, but also if you miss, if you miss that must-see thing. Um, yeah, no, I know what you mean. You know, in my case, it's not like people are banging down my door. I don't, I don't live in LA or in New York. Um, I live in Virginia and by the ocean. And um, I, I don't, uh, that doesn't mean I don't want people to bang down my door. That's fine. I, but I'm, when a project like this comes along, and uh, you know, it's a, and like Amazon couldn't keep us for to long enough, they couldn't keep us under contract long enough to see if they were going to do a season three, so they had to let us go. But I would um, make every effort and pull strings and check my bank account to say, like, can I can just hold out till they start shooting Amazon? I mean, till they start shooting Patriot again, if, because that's what I want to do. Wow. And I have said, and I and I mean. If I could work with these people on something like this for another decade, I would just stop, put my feet up, and watch the sun go down and be quite happy. <laughs> it's that special. It's it, great. It's, it's very it's, special. It's nice when, when you hear that, that that is the, the story behind the camera, because it really feels that way when you watch it. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, one of Steve's, one of his gifts, uh, among his obvious and many gifts, is creating an atmosphere that's um, a very happy workplace. I mean, not happy, happy Joe, very professional. He's very specific what he wants when he writes it. He wants, you know, he wants things to be delivered a certain way, and he wants, they set up their shots in such a way that you don't really, as an audience, have to work hard. It's just, there are some beautiful shots. I mean, cinematically, I think it's a stunning show. Yeah, it's really, really unique. And I know, uh, by the, sorry to interrupt, no, but no. I, know, I know anyone in the business, especially anyone who works behind the camera, will be able to look at this show and, and go like, wow, that's, and I've had that happen from people I've worked with. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that, he's so specific, in fact, that you at first are intimidated as an actor and go like, well, what do I get to bring to the table? But you get to bring everything. It's just all very subtle. And he wants all your creativity, but it has to be within these parameters, which in a way is freeing, because you, know, you, you, you don't have to bring your whole bushel basket full of stuff, just bring this thing. Figure out how you're going to use that. Yeah, and it's so much about timing and about subtleties of uh, performance. And it feels very 
timely in, a, in an odd way because it is about America in, or, or the idea of America in the world mm -hmm. in this particular moment. And in some ways it feels like a very throwback, Cold War, espionage kind of a story. And in another way, it's, it's everything else. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that feels like it's evolving because you've been making this show over the course of of a change in administrations yeah. and a change in America's place in the world. Yeah. How do you feel how do you feel the show looks now to us watching this as as Americans in the world? I think it looks however you receive it. I think it looks the funny thing is I think in making the show it's almost like actually doing those missions might have been in that you don't take you don't see the greater picture. You simply see what it is you're focused on. Uh, you know, you can't think about politics back in the States when you're trying to get this money to this guy who has to get it to this guy and this thing, these things have to happen in Iran until some... So it's ironic to me. I'm still not sure exactly what patriot means in terms of the title of the show because uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not convinced because I'm something of a skeptic and a cynic that, that I'm motivated, my character is completely motivated by patriotism as opposed by mission accomplishment. You know, so if we have this task, this is what I do, and this is, and my son is the same way, driven to accomplish a task. And, uh, and I think the politics have to be aside from it. Mm. I mean, you'll talk to a lot of military personnel and they'll say the same thing, I can't really think about politics. Right, and, um, the job's the job. Yeah, but as far as how it's received, and uh, uh, you know, I, don't, I think that depends upon what what tribe you belong to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, I think whatever, however you vote, uh, it's it's a magnificent show, and it's unlike anything else. Uh, so I'm delighted, and I would love I would love to see a third season, and I would love to have you come back. No, that uh, that would make me very happy. Come back even before then, Terry. Thank you so much for joining us. The new season of Patriot, you're gonna you're gonna want to cruise. Cruise it, not binge it. Cruise it. Cruise it. It's a great thing for a rainy weekend. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Though. Get get under your weighted blanket, put on <laughs> put on your cozy lights, and just snuggle up with this with uh, song and espionage and, and a little uh, an occasional um, violence and sadness, yeah. right? Yes, and some great music that's, great. that he adds, not just that he writes that he that he adds. And just great great music and yeah. uh, and even hearing this guy sing like an angel, Terry. Oh, well, thank thank you. you so much for joining us. If you like what you watch today be sure and follow us on Facebook at Salon and subscribe to us on YouTube.